So I guess we'll start. Welcome. So nice to see a good turnout this morning. And it's an important occasion, an important event. We're happy that we have seven people who were willing to run for Board of Education. So um, those are all good signs. My name is Kathy Hebers. I'm one of the four forum facilitators. Uh, the others are Judy Ann Files and Phoebe Benziger and Barbara Bynum in the back. And each week we come up with what we hope will be a topic of interest for people in Montrose. Our goal is simply to inform. We're not political, we're not partisan, uh, we don't allow speakers to become targets. During Q&A, we usually entertain questions, not comments. Everybody in the room, if they're attending, is um, a person interested in learning more information and has their own opinions. So we'd be here all day if everybody gave their opinions. Today, we're gonna veer from that a little bit in that there will be no time for questions. With, because we have eight people speaking, we're going to give each of them a maximum of six minutes, and then we're gonna shut them down. So, uh, we begin promptly at eight, we end promptly at nine, those are our guide rules, and really that's how Forum operates. If you are new to Forum and you would like to get on our email list, we have cards up front. Uh, you're welcome to have one, sign yourself up. You get the weekly email. If you like it, you come. If you don't like it, you don't come. It's real simple. So if um, you're not, on our email list, please let us know. We are ready to begin, and as I said, I'll be handing the mic over to Lori Laird. She's the administrative assistant to the superintendent of the school district. How many superintendents, Lori? That's seven. Seven <laughs> superintendents. So uh, she certainly has lots of experience in that job. After she's finished speaking, she'll pass the mic to the first speaker. They have been asked to address three things. First, a background, a little bit of background information about themselves. Second, to identify a strength of the school district. It's always easy to pick things apart uh, we'd like to be a little more positive and have them identify a strength and then something that needs to be improved on. If they still have time left, they're welcome to add other comments and that's how it's gonna go. Again, thank you for filling the room. We're happy to have so many people. And Lori, it's yours. Good morning, and thank you for having me here today. Again, my name is Lori Laird, and I'm the designated election official for the school district. School board elections are held during odd-numbered years. Our board has seven members from designated director districts, which is our plan of representation, and they serve a term of four years. The seats alternate four and three each odd year of elections. A board member must have lived in their district they represent for 12 months prior to elect to voting. Uh, they must be a registered voter and they cannot have been convicted of a sexual offense <coughs> against a child. On occasion, you'll see two-year terms. We do have one this year. This happens if a board member resigns during their term and typically it's because they move out of their district and they can no longer serve. In addition, uh, Montrose County School District overlaps into Gunnison and Ray counties. So we do have voters from both those counties as well. Not very many, but there are a few. Uh, 
Per Secretary of State date designations, in August, 90 days prior to election, so that date changes every year, the, the date of the elections change, uh, petitions are available to be picked up to run for the school board. A valid petition must have 50 verified signatures and be turned in to me no later than 67 days prior to election. As DEO, I verify names, addresses, and that the signer is an active voter in the Secretary of State database. I also verify the signers have not signed the petition of two people in the same director district. When the petition is certified, the person is verified as a candidate and then moves on. Once the candidates are verified, I publish required online candidate information on the district website. And I work with the Elections Department of Montrose County we, um, on the verification of ballot content. At that point, my role is paused until elections are done and we receive the certificate of election. That's all I have. Thank you for being here today to hear the candidates and to hear about the election process and I hope you have a great day. Um, I just want to say thank you for having me and um, I just want to tell you that my seven-year-old is voting for me. He wanted me to tell you that. <laughs> and he's already made requests for the calendar this year. So um, I'm Misha Ballot and I grew up on the Western Slope. I am a wife of 22 years. I have three amazing children. Um, I've been a mom for 16 years. And I have been a nurse for 18 years. Montrose and Olathe, what do we want? Do we want students who are thriving academically? For the last four years, our CMAS scores have revealed that three out of our four students in our district are not meeting grade level for reading and math. There's a lot of talk about addressing anxiety in our district, and I really do believe addressing anxiety is really important in our district so that children can learn. But I, I ask, how much anxiety are students having if they can't read or do math? Recently, a teacher expressed that um, she gives out homework, um, or did give out homework, for the no homework policy for math, and she's been giving out the work, but it's not required to be turned in anymore, and she's already seen a decline um, in her students' math abilities because they're not required to turn it in. Also, uh, elementary school moms have been telling me that their students have been coming to them and saying, um, I don't have to read and I don't have to do extra work at home because we don't have any homework. I can tell that moms are really, really concerned about this. Do we want clear and concise communication with our parents? Homework bridges the gap with parents and that communication. It really allows parents to work together closely with the teachers and to show that where is the kid struggling and where is the kid excelling. And for me personally, my seven-year-old, it's actually one of the sweetest times I have is when I'm sitting down, reading with my child, going over his spelling words and his phonics. And I really feel like it's important for our parents to be able to sit down and know what's going on with their children at school so they can help them excel. Also, I've had parents express to me that they don't know what's going on in the classroom with their kids in elementary school. Um, they have asked for things to be given to them to know what's going on weekly, but they haven't been receiving that. Um, some teachers are doing that, but not all teachers. And so I ask, would it be a good standard of practice in our elementary schools to have consistent information being sent out about what's going on in their elementary school students' classroom. In college, I actually received a syllabus that would show me weekly what I was doing in um, my classes for the whole semester. And I think it's important that we do something like that even within our district. One of the biggest strengths that we have in our district are the people. So I just want to say, like, our teachers and our support staff are working very hard and very dedicated to our students, and they really are the strength of our district. And they've been talking to me, and so I just am asking, you know, how, how can we make our, our teachers feel supported? How can we help them to feel appreciated and know that they are going to be really well taken care of? Um, recently, a teacher told me that she 
received brand new reading curriculum and only received about a week and a half um, right before school started that curriculum and three days worth of training. Is that supporting our teachers? Another area of concern is our special ed, our special ed um, or our special education department. I'm very concerned about that, but I only have six minutes. I know I've brought up a lot of concerns. We have to look at the hard realities to really address things that are going on in our district. We have to have hard dialogue. We have to be open and honest about what's going on to improve. I have to tell you though, I'm really excited. There's been a lot of talk about the science of reading recently. And I was exposed to science of reading five years ago when one of my kids was struggling with reading. A phenomenal tutor helped me with my child and I've been using it with my seven year old and that child has been thriving and he's only in second grade. There are districts and states that are doing the science of reading right now. How many of you know the difference between balanced literacy and science of reading? Okay. For the rest of you, that's your homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Mississippi, they introduced the science of reading in 2013. Their literacy rates have just skyrocketed. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, one question that I have for you is, do you know that if a child hasn't really become fluent by third grade that there's a 60% chance that they'll drop out of school. I'm wondering if our literacy rate, our low literacy rate is possibly causing our high truancy rate. Parents and teachers feel comfortable sharing with me. I always want this to be the culture of our district. I'm here to listen to students, teachers, and parents. I want a solid foundation of education for our students and I plan to listen, to serve, and I'm going to help them flourish. I ask for your vote. I'm Nisha Ballard. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Eric Westison, and I'm going to hold this mic better. Um, I've been on the school board for the last year. And now I'm running for District A, which is the district that covers the west side of Olathe, California Mesa, Coal Creek, Shadowhaw Valley. Um, I grew up in Olathe, and uh, I went to high school there. I graduated there. My, uh, my dad actually went to the old Coal Creek School. My grandpa served on that school board. Uh, my dad became a school teacher. My grandpa taught. My sister's a school teacher. Uh, I'm very, public, very passionate about public education. Um, and, and especially, I guess, I'm passionate about community-driven public education. I think that's really important. Um, for eight years now, I've worked for uh, John Harold at Tuxedo Corn over in Olathe. And uh, <laughs> what, a, what a wild time that has been. Um, what I've enjoyed, though, about it is uh, I've really gotten to get to know a lot of our local farmers. Um, I've gotten to spend a lot of time with our, our families that are connected to the agricultural community. I've gotten to know our farm workers, and um, I, I can't say enough what a privilege that has been um, to become so connected to such a, a wonderful community in such a special way. Um, also, since 2016, I've uh, served our community in several different ways. I, I was on the DMEA Roundup Board, I was part of the Making Olathe Better project under the Colorado Trust. Uh, we, we did a lot of community development in Olathe and uh, put on an entrepreneurship camp for our middle schoolers. Um, I got to work a little bit with Region 10, which, which I really enjoyed. Uh, ultimately, to me, it's really important that, uh, that we just show up, that we show up for our community. I think that's how we make a difference. And, and that's why I want to be on the school board. That's why I want to continue to serve there. Uh, I want to make a difference for my community. And um, over the last year, I've spent a lot of hours uh, talking to teachers, talking with students, talking with parents, uh, sitting in the district office, learning about uh, you know, how, how the budget works. I'm, I'm looking at poor Emily Imus back there, who's always explaining things to me. But you know, I've, I've gotten to know what it takes to get the, keep our schools moving forward here. Um, through all of that, there's, there's three things that really stand out to me. 
where, where we have both strengths and weaknesses. Um, number one, uh, we have to put our students first. We have to create an environment where they can be successful personally and academically. Um, I am actually really excited about the, the plan that our district is currently rolling out. Um, we are tackling multiple barriers that are, that are impeding our kids' learning. Um, everything from absenteeism and um, you know, engaging our kids so that they want to be there, so that they're learning in the way that's best for them. Uh, we're connecting with our community to figure out what's going on at home, how can we help these kids um, feel better when they are at school so they can be focused on learning. We're bringing together the best resources so that our teachers are using um, research proven uh, teaching methods so that our kids have the best chance to learn possible. I am really excited and, and really proud of, of what our district has done um, and I'm excited to see how that goes over the next couple of years. Um, on kids too, I, I've talked to so many kids that uh, they're in such a hurry to get out of here and um, and I want to show our kids that they can be successful right here in our valley, that they can be happy here. Um, when we have students that grow up and leave, you know, I want them to be successful wherever they go. And, and I hope that they'll uh, get out there, be successful, have a good experience, and come back and you know, share that with our community. Uh, second, I do want to talk about our teachers. Um, we have to give them the time, the space, the funding, the resources, what they need to do, the, the best job they can as teachers. Um, I'll, not all of it, but a lot of these, these new initiatives that were taken at the district level uh, is coming down to the teachers. And um, the, we can't do this work without them. And I'm so grateful for our teachers. Uh, we value them so much. And, and um, we need to make sure that they feel that. Um, third, something that's come up a lot in the community and I, that I know is important to everybody in our district is uh, they, they want us to hold our leaders accountable. And I know that's an important part of the school board's job. And I have learned uh, over the last year that um, any concern that comes up, any issue that somebody feels like hasn't been dealt with or, or they, they don't understand, if I can answer it, I know I can walk in the door, I can sit down with our superintendent, with Dr. Stevenson, and, and we can talk about it, and I can ask her hard questions. She doesn't get offended. Uh, I don't get offended. We can talk through things. We can find solutions. We can communicate what needs to be communicated. So um, I'm excited to be able to continue doing that, and, um, and I know that that's going to be important for us going forward. Um, if you want to learn more about me, uh, you can go to ericforncsd.com, D-R-I-K for ncsd.com. Um, if you're passionate about community-driven education the way I am and, uh, and, and public education, I hope you vote for me. Thank you. <laughs>
He encourages you now to vote for those you are convinced will do what is right. He asks that you vote for Ted Hilario for Montrose County School Board District B this November. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Charlie Oswald and I'm running for District D. I'm a country girl, a mother of two, and a grandmother. I'm one of four kids that was raised by a man whose early years were on the streets of North Dakota. His father died when he was four and his immigrant mother was completely illiterate and couldn't speak any English. At nine he was put in reform school where a teacher put him on a straight path. And 20 years later, we were able to meet that wonderful woman, and she could see the fruits of her labor. My mother's background wasn't any easier. However, that young couple decided that their kids were going to be raised with a strong work ethic and understand the value of a good education. After I graduated from high school, I moved to Arizona and became a court reporter, and then later worked for two attorneys as a legal secretary. After I, I married my husband there and moved him here, where I convinced him it was much cooler in many ways, and uh, we had our two children. Here, it was here in Longmont that I became COO of an asset management company, and I managed 50 employees in the various departments. I later became self-employed in real estate, marketing, sales, and development. During that time, I also was sponsored and graduated from the leadership program of the Rockies. And after moving here, I graduated from the Montrose U leadership program. I've been a resident of Montrose now for eight years. I've been volunteered in various capacities and elected positions. I'm running for school board because I'm concerned. I'm concerned when I see that young adults aren't able to make proper change or spell properly. I'm concerned when I learn that there are so many kids that don't understand the value of our Constitution, what it means, who wrote it, and why it is so important, keeping us as free citizens and not living under cruel tyranny. I'm concerned when I hear that young children are being taught to be suspicious of their classmates because of the color of their skin, or that they might not have been born in the right body, only to be given terrible drugs that we don't understand what the long-term effects are, and it's actually encouraged. I'm concerned when I hear adults say that they don't feel supported, and they're afraid to speak out for concern of retaliation against their children or themselves. I'm concerned when talking to a teacher and talking about the issues in school and the conversation becomes a whisper and we're the only two people in the room. I'm concerned that as a community we're not doing all we can to give our kids the foundational skills they need to be great learners, readers, thinkers, math problem solvers, artistic creators, and science inquirers. As a grandmother, I want to do all I can to see that all kids get the best opportunities possible. I believe that the strength in our district is like Nisha said, it's the people. It's their kind, caring, intelligent, and devoted teachers and staff that are obviously working very hard to keep up with today's challenges. But I'm also concerned that they're not properly supported, that morale is low, and that they're being pulled in too many directions. One of our scarcest resources that we have is the time with our kids in their formative years to give them the tools they need to be productive and thrive. We have an obligation to them to teach them the importance of learning responsibility, self-respect, time management, and good study habits. If I can quote from the READ Act, it says, it takes a community, a partnership between schools, educators, communities, and families to improve liter literacy for all students. 
As an active member of our community, I will work to improve upon that partnership. I'm running to bring new eyes, ears, and energy to the school board. I have the time, I'm committed, and I respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you. Tom. My name is Tom West. Can you hear me? My name is Tom West. I'm running for District D for four year term on the school board. As you know, I, some of you I've seen before, some of you I've been in the classroom with. So, one of the things we want to really take a look at where is Tom coming from? He came from Pueblo, Colorado, where I started in 1973 teaching, and I came here in 1983 with my wife, Mary. I have a degree, BA degree in social studies, I have a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. My wife has a BA degree in early childhood and has a master's in special education. So we came here to teach. We came here to be a part of the community. That was what it was all about. But during these times, we've seen a change and growth that's unbelievable through the last 25 years. To see the town grow, to be able to see what schools that would be needed, such as Cottonwood, such as the ability to expand out in Grove Johnson, such as to place a school like Columbine. One of the things you take a look at, it, is it possible for more changes to occur? Absolutely, because Montrose is a great place to live. As I reiterate about my sons that graduated from Montrose High School, those three kids were something else. The oldest kid at one time at Centennial said, tease dad, I want to be the top in my class when I get there. What do I do? Well, why don't you talk to Mr. Ralph Balls? He'll tell you. Mr. Ralph Balls told him how to do it, became a valedictorian. Became a magnet from the of Western State. Middle son a little different. Hey, you want to go play football at UNC? So he goes, hey, when does school start? Dad, when I get there. Start <laughs> but anyway, then you have the third child that says, hey, I'm going to go to the University of Hawaii. Cool. Okay. Now we're having fun. <laughs> but you know, some of the things I've been so proud of and being part of is being a part of a balanced budget. And that's a very critical thing these days and ages, as tight as money is. You know, also being part of the committee and the facilities committee of help building a Columbine, which is desperate to me. You go over there, it's, it's the state of the art. That's what we're programmed to do about every week, trying to get that accomplished. Okay. The other things too, as times expanded out with security problems and uh, you know with d disastrous things that happened to schools throughout the United States, we need to take a look at what we could do with security, and we got embroiled into that of vestibules, fencing, making sure that we can keep the bad guy out of the can and get responses with a very cooperative police department and restoring resource officers in our schools. We've got to have those kind of people. We've got to have a friendship with them, and that's what it was all about. We've also created an ability to have a threat management manager that has been very, very astute to what's happening in the past and keeping us ahead of the game with acute ability to see what we have as far as technology to keep us informed. So the school safety is a very, very important factor for me too, because I was part of that committee. We also have collaboration with peer kindness, and it goes a long ways to keep that going because we have to have some kind of bridge because it's not always a physical threat to our students. It could be a mental threat, and we want to keep that in perspective. As far as other committees I've been on, as far as UA, UVA negotiations as a board member, and that's been very productive. Okay, uh, one of the things too, as you can see, is challenges for our school district. What are we challenged with? We're challenged with improving our academics. Okay, both achievement and growth is a key factor. You can achieve one year, but how is that growth going to continue? We want growth to continue and get better. Okay, we were presented with this last Tuesday at a board meeting or work session, and we have some deficiencies. There's no doubt about it. Okay, dodge it. Okay, we're stuck. We're not above average. We want to get there. And Dr. Stevenson has a plan for that, and we're going to incorporate that, and we're going to go with it. So we're going to push. We're going to keep pushing to see what we can get because the teachers are so great here. Okay, just keep that in mind. There is a progress going on with that. Okay, one of the other things, too, is that we want to make sure that we have a career choices. And we have a new program coming about with that. And Dr. Stevenson exposed us that, and we've seen un unbelievable things are gonna start happening with that. Because it's not only gonna happen here, what are you gonna do with the kids that graduate from here? We want them to come back, some of them are gonna leave, okay? Uh, see all what's happening in the community, say, can, can some of your students know where you're at? Yes, because when I had a CAT scan at one time and a nurse is up there said, hey, Mr. West, you taught us how to drive. I said, do I have to take my clothes off? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, I'm, I'm also looking into the commitment of, of uh, communication with our communities, both in Montrose and Olathe, and I think that this is one of our key things that we have to continue to do. We want to make sure 
that we hear the voices of the public, make sure we hear the voices of our constituents, make sure that we hear what they want to say, and we constitute that into what we want to get accomplished. Okay? And now we want to expand upon how we create the relationships between teacher and student. The relationship is a critical thing because when that kid remembers where you're at and where you came from and what you did for him, that's critical. So overall, if you take a look at what my experience is with both with past boards and again with my teaching in the field and also in the classroom, it's one of those important things to note that I've been there. My feet have been in the classroom. My feet have been on the field. And we've seen a lot of cooperation with all of our kids with that. It's often fun to say that when you're going down there and some kid goes, hey, Mr. West, you taught me how to drive. Yes, I did. Are you okay? Which usually they usually say, hey, I haven't had a wreck yet. Well, thank goodness. So I look forward to serving for, on the Montreal School Board for the next four years. And I look forward to beginning to keep that conversation going between Montreal and Olathe. And one of the things that you really want to know is, I'm going to go get her. Did you see that? We're going to get things done. And we're going to progress toward that. And that's what we're looking for. Because you know what? It's all about our kids. Okay. Thank you both for me. That's a hard act to follow. All that energy. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Uh, my name is Jody Hefty. I'm running for District F. It's a four-year term. I'm a wife for, gosh, a long time. I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother, or as the kids call me, Nina, and I'm a retired school teacher. I've lived in Montrose since 1978. My husband and his brothers all graduated from Montrose High School. Um, both of our kids graduated from Montrose High School, and um, my kids are raising their families in the Montrose and Olathe communities. Um, my gr granddaughters go to public education, two in Olathe, two in Delta, and um, they're doing a great job. My career with Montrose began at Morgan Elementary, which is just right over there. Um, I was a volunteer. I was a helper in the cafeteria. Joe Ulaberry and I did a great job keeping that program going. Um, I became a para for a few years, and those ladies encouraged me to go back to school. And so I drove to Western for two years with a small family and got my teaching degree. Um, Prior to Western, I had an associate degree in bookkeeping and accounting, and then after that, I worked on my degree for curriculum and assessments. So that's my educational background. I taught primarily kindergarten and second graders, special education. Um, I was an academic coach for a while. Uh, I taught summer school with the dropout prevention program and with the um, READ Act that came along a few years later. Primarily, I worked at Johnson Elementary and um, I finished my career at Pomona Elementary um, with 34-ish years there. Why am I running? The answer I have is I have a passion for students. I have a value system for education. And it is important for me that I'm out there advocating for our students. And I want the students to have a solid foundation, a solid education that gives them the platform to be successful as they move on into their lives. Um, and this is important to me because I come from a family of um, poverty, alcoholism, and domestic violence. And if it wasn't for those public education teachers, those people out there who believed in me and gave me the encouragement to go on, I would not have had the successes that I've had today. Um, and I still have a lot to contribute. Um, I um, am a certified teacher. I have extensive, extensive professional development, especially around reading, which was my passion as I was a teacher. I can offer insight to the board um, with my past collaboration and work with staff and administration. I even received the Lion Advocacy Award that honored me for my contributions as an advocate for public employees in public education. Um, strengths of the district, the staff and the kids. If it wasn't for the kids, we wouldn't have the staff. And if it wasn't for the staff, um, we wouldn't be where we are today. They work hard. They provide a solid education. They're working in the trenches. They keep getting more and more, asked to do more and more, and they keep doing more and more. And I think we have to honor that. I think we have to honor what they're doing and listen to them as they're talking to us about what's happening um, with the kids. Um, we've had a lot of opportunities for our kids 
here in Montrose. We have Peak, we have the Black Canyon High School, um, we have the Outdoor Education Program, to name a few. So we're doing diverse things to meet the needs of our kids in all the places they're coming. Um, I've heard people talk about the safety, and it's not just the physical safety, it's the emotional safety. We've got to be there for our kids. Um, we really have to listen and understand and make relationships. If we don't do that, then our kids are just going to be kind of spinning their wheels, I think. Um, the district is really focused on the science of reading right now, and I think that's important because if we can read, we can move forward with all the other curriculum things that are being asked um, to do. Improvements, you know, times are changing. We have to continue to focus and provide instruction for higher achievement. I think we all agree that we need to do a better job, and how we do that is what we're here, and that's what I want to advocate for. Um, parent communication, I'm hearing that over and over. We have got to ensure that our parents are informed. Our parents need to know what's happening in the classroom. Our parents need to know what their kids are learning. And so we need to figure out a way to form a really strong partnership to ensure that that continues. And maybe it's social media, maybe it's better communication from parents to students, or maybe it's better communication with the board. But we have to be out in our community really looking at um, that there. Um, and then the budget. Yes, we have a balanced budget, but as most of you should know, that we are in the lower end of financing with the state and the, our county. So we have to make sure that our money is being spent appropriately to work with our kids, for the achievement of our kids, and um, to do that. We need to also make sure we're hiring and retaining qualified teachers. That's tough right now with the economy the way it is and housing, but we can do it. We've got to listen, we've got to collaborate, we have to build relationships and identify those needs and come up with great solutions. And I know that this community and the teachers and the administration, that we can do that. So a vote for Jody is a vote for students, a vote for the staff, and a vote for parents. Thank you for your vote in the room. Good morning. I'm last. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is what it is, and we're going to get started this morning. I am Dawn Schilt. I am running in District F for School Board. A little bit about me. I've been here for 29 years. My husband and I have five children. We've raised our kids here, educated our kids here, and love the community, love the beauty around us, love the people of this community, and I love the education that we have in this community. But I want to hop right into education because that's what I'm about, that's what I'm passionate about, and that's what I'd like to express to you. For me, education is about improving lives and giving kids a chance for a future that they may not have if we are not educating them. Plato says, the direction in which education starts a man's life will determine his future life. And that is so important. That is something we need to really get a handle on and look at. What future do we want our kids in this community to be having? Our district is set up for complete success. We're very blessed. We're gifted. We have the options and the opportunities to implement what we feel is good for our families. What's good for our teachers and our students? We've got the full reign over that. We've got the ability to do that. That's a gift. You also have in place good, qualified, engaged, capable teachers sitting in classrooms. That's a gift. A lot of districts don't have that. We have that. But my question then is, if that is the case, why is our district failing our kids? Why are we not reaching the standards we should be giving them? First is probably the academic standards we need to be looking at and raising. Our scores are indicating we're failing our kids. And I don't see why that should be happening. So that would be one thing I will be looking into. We need to be providing more options for families. We live in a community that has great resources. What are, are the options for their families? As a teacher, I'm going to tell you, not all children learn the same at the same place. Those families need to be able to look for valuable, solid resources for their families. We need to be making sure our teachers have curriculums there are basic, classical, we can call them the three R's, we can call them fundamentals, whatever you want to call them, but they have to be academic in the classroom. We've got to make sure our teachers have that available to them. 
And I want to look at the budget as well because I would like to make sure that our money, your money, your tax dollars are actually following the kids and the teachers into the classroom first. The money gets allocated after that to other areas. Advocating for our teachers, well, I am working at Colorado West Christian School as a kindergarten teacher. So I can tell you this is very personal and very passionate for me. I understand what teachers are under. I understand the hard work that they're doing. I understand the restraints and the things that they battle every day. They're in the classroom because they want to be there. They're in the classroom because they love your kids. We need to be supporting them and advocating for them. Are they being fairly compensated? Are there so many restraints and conditions? Are there so many issues and burdens that they're carrying that they're not able to accomplish their jobs? I want to take a look at that. I want to see what can we actually be doing for our teachers and make sure the money is following them as well. I believe teachers are the educators. They are not the parents. You are the parents, and that's the way it should be, and that's the way it must be. And as far as my third point with re-engaging our parents in the district, we need to be really focusing on building our trust back with these families and letting them know how important they are, how critical it is that they are engaged in their children's education and academics. We do, um, I work with parents every day from my classroom, and I can tell you how valuable it is when a parent is engaged fully with their own students. And I'm going to bring up the hard stuff, I'm going to bring up the awkward stuff, because I know there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of rhetoric that goes on out there. This is not rhetoric for me, this is not buzz language for me. But when we hear things going around in our district, things of political ideologies, agendas that are possibly hitting our classrooms, we can name them, we can say woke, we can say CRT, we can say the LGBTQ, we can start calling out gender, we can do all that, but I want to tell you as a teacher, that's not going to educate your kids. That's not going to raise the standards, and it's putting a burden on our teachers to parent your students. The parents should have free will and options to value their children and teach their children at home whatever they choose. But in the classroom, when those parents are dropping their kids off, it is our responsibility as teachers to educate their children so they can use the resources later in their life. I want to see those things removed from the classroom. You know, for me, keeping parents involved, keeping the parents as the authority figures, keeping parents in the front, supporting our teachers fully, letting them know they matter to us, Raising standards in this district is going to automatically create the success we want for our kids. I am determined to do this. I am determined to work hard. I, excuse me. I will be listening and I will be responding back. For me, it is not a game. Education is something that must happen. We can do this. We can make this happen. It's not going to just possibly happen. It will be happening. Vote for me, Don Schilt. Wow, tough choices. Thank you all for consenting to be here. Thank you to the audience for being here. Um, hopefully everyone will give this a lot of thought. There are other forums coming up. If you would need to <coughs> hit any of them again, do you know off the top of your head, Lori, when those are? Or if you have neighbors. There is a forum tonight at 6 p.m. at um, the Holiday Inn with Three Rivers Room, sponsored by the UVEA. Uh, there will be one on the 11th at CMU campus sponsored by the vote, and on the 16th at MADA, and that one's at 6, the one on the 11th is at 7 p.m., and all candidates uh, will, should be present at those. So if you have neighbors who would like more information, you can pass that information along. Next week for forum, we're going to continue with our ballot series, and it will be two different speakers, We'll begin with Tressa Gines, who's the 
county clerk and recorder. She's going to bring sample ballots, talk about the ballot, talk about election procedures, and we'll follow that up with League of Women Voters, and they will go over the two ballot issues, explaining the pro and the con for each issue. Um, it seems like HH is the one that needs the most explanation. So it, again, if you want to be an informed voter, want to hear the pros and cons of each of those, this is the place to be again next week. We um, want to certainly, again, thank the candidates for being willing to run. Lori and I were visiting before you all came about the fact that there have been years when we couldn't get anyone to run. So it's so important that there are people willing to do that. I see Alice Murphy in the audience. She is a present school board member. Are there any other school board members? Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Thank you for being here as well. And thanks to the two of you for being willing to be on the board. We appreciate that. And they are? Oh, Phoebe and Barbara. <laughs> well, thank you for serving on the board. I, I knew that they both had done that. I didn't think about the years that they had served. Obviously, there are two people willing to donate their time for lots of different things. We have uh, some extra time. The candidates will stay after for Q&A. If you have any questions, feel free to come up and visit with them. Again, thank you for being here and for filling the room. It shows you care. And that's what we're all about. Thanks again. See you next week.